we're alive is on a separate chapter. What? We are alive. We are alive. We are. Let's try and encourage everybody to talk to Jesus. That's what it means. Are we alive? Are we alive? <laughs> okay. We are alive, live. We had to, we had to create a new uh, vibe. The last one we just completely crashed out on it. As I said last last time, it was odd because we had we had one that kind of died in the middle of the road and we couldn't get anything else past it. So let's hopefully everyone in the next two minutes, um, everyone should start to join and uh, welcome us on this new feed. I'm so sorry to anybody who's actually already straight across. Um, this mic in. Do I even understand what happened? Not excuses really. to all Irish and Englishmen. Oh no, we don't need excuses. Uh, okay, let me send a quick message to everybody. Okay, hopefully if everyone starts refreshing, we should, we should, 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 are we live? Let's have a look, guys, let's see if you can hear us. So what, what happened? We we had a live and then we... We had, had a live, live and Kickstarter decided that nope, 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 it was not going to... Uh, okay. It was not going to allow the, the, the software to pick up. As soon as I create a new one, through, no problem, it just went. Okay, so do we need people, can, can some, do we need someone to go in the comments and say, I've, everybody I've refresh? I've popped the message okay. in the previous one right done, away, okay, that's cool. straight away. Um, what about in the comment section? Do we just need to say go and refresh? Now, yeah. uh, we will not, I don't think we're actually live right now to everybody. We've got a minute and 30 seconds before Kickstarter actually says yes, you're oh, So we're not live. Um, we are streaming. Whether anyone can hear us right now is I don't know. Uh, okay. So let's, uh, Strange. This little limbo. This <laughs> yeah. sort of, we're doing half of it. Tracking Your station pages. 53. Can you hear me, Madrid? That there. Do, do, do. Okay. Sometimes, yeah, I can see many people waiting, so we should, in literally a minute, be about to go live. Or not. I very much hope so. It looks, it, oh goodness, what is it doing? Let D mic for a second. I'm going to just make sure that everyone is coming to join us. Sorry for the noise, but it's actually in here. I'll be able to see it from this other machine that has got successfully. Okay. Oh, yes, I see some chat. I see some. Oh, yes. Kickstarter, and you're not live in the chat. Oh, Kickstarter are actually chatting. And Kickstarter has put up in the course. We're not live until the chat is here. So, yes, we've got like 20 seconds. So, we're not live until what? Does the countdown get to zero? Yeah, I think we're about to be alive in now. Okay. <laughs> Thankfully, Kickstarter must have picked up the fact that we had a little uh, error. The Kickstarter support guys were on that immediately. That was, that was excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Kickstarter guys. Awesome support. Hello. Oh, look, I'm fiddling with my mic on stream. <laughs> Hello, Kickstarter says we're the most important streamers. Hello, hello, hello. hello. There we go. Very nice of them. That was everybody. Say hello to Kickstarter support. Thank you so much. They're epic. K Kickstarter support realized we had an issue. They jumped straight on. They made sure we were okay to go live. Apologize for the 10 minute late. Hello. Oh, okay. Okay. Are we good? Are we decent? Are we good? I'm not showing any skin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't know about that. Cameras are working. Cameras are working. Great. Cameras are working. Good, good, good. Who have we got then? Let's say hello. Hello, Jimmy Anderson. Hello, Kickstarter. Thank you for your help getting us going. Um, hello, Louis. Hello, Bree, Joan, uh, Colby, Harlot, Dublar, Jamie, Dave, Albert, Irwin, Gloomy, uh, Roger, Ashley, Daniel. Awesome. So we had like 600 people uh, subscribed to the, the previous stream. So we're going to give it a minute or two to so let this build up. We're up to 200. What happens already. to them? Those guys are stuck in some kind of like Kickstarter purgatry where you, you back projects all the time. It's, the wrong, never it's, the, it's the wrong game. It, that should be for Joan of Arc. Uh, <laughs> Kickstarter <laughs> limbo should be for Joan of Arc. Kickstarter limbo. Still 400 people watching the old stream down rapidly. Okay, hopefully everyone's coming across. Just okay. give it. I've popped a message in the comments. Kickstarter yeah. also popped a message in the old stream first. Thank you, Excellent. Kickstarter guys. Um, hello, Mark. Hello, Diego. Uh, hello, William, Gabriel, time for some jokes while waiting for those. Oh, give me some jokes. Yep. You love my bad dad jokes, don't you? You love my awful, awful uh, jokes. We're on there, aren't we? So yes, we are, absolutely. Right? I love them. They're marvelous. Give me some more of those. 
Uh, anyone that needs to look up sarcasm in the dictionary, that that was it. <laughs> that was it. No dad joke says Ashley Churin's not on board. Solo mode Kane is a great joke says Alchemy. Well, we're going to talk about that today. That was my we're, fault, I'm afraid. Yeah, we're going to we're going to talk about that. We I don't think we could have resisted that. Joke. It was no. I think it was. It's one of those ones that just has to happen. It's it's yeah. written in the stars. Yeah. It's got to be the way. Um, one of the first questions. So, I, please, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to go through what's happened with the updates, what we've seen over the past 24 hours, what, what everything has been unlocked. We're going to talk about some of the frequently asked questions. What we want you guys to do, of course, is to pop lots of questions into the, I get my hand up to it, oh, that's right, right there, into the question and answer section. We will go back and go through all those. Jake and I are then going to have a chat about the solo mode. Probably one of the most interesting and intriguing things, actually, um, that we've kind of looked to put into the game. And then we'll come and kind of answer all your questions. So, yes, public service announcement from Alchemy. There is only 48 minutes left to get an early bird. I'm presuming that everybody here has it. I'm presuming. How many yep. people are left? We have uh, only tw 22. 22 when I last saw. So, it, just so you guys know, if it, those 22 people find out later on that they missed it, we will absolutely support them. We can, of course, find out what backer number they are, check that they did indeed back in the first 24 hours, and absolutely switch them over. If you know any of them, please ask them to switch over now if they can. But if they don't make it, don't worry. We will uh, be in touch with those guys and we'll make sure that we can support them. Um, carry on the conversation in the official Good Place Discord channel. Wow, the Discord guys have now got proper slogans. That's <laughs> that's uh, guys. That's that's great. That's organising. Okay, we have just over two hundred now. Okay. Um, I think we'll probably start in a second. Get into the questions. I want to get as many people into the chat as we possibly can. Sure, sure. Do you want to talk about that? That's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. So we're getting people on. I mean, we're we're here to, we're here to talk to you guys to tell you uh, sort of to, to answer the obvious things that we've come across several times and to listen to what you know and answer what you've got to ask yeah. now and, and just generally kind of clear up any confusions, answer any questions because we've got three weeks left and we've got loads of cool exciting stuff to do and we don't want anybody starting off with a question. We want to, when we go oh. tomorrow and we start doing the things we aren't allowed to talk about yet. Yeah. Then we want you know everybody fresh, everybody you know up to speed. Mm. So stay, stay about... tuned to the very, 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 very end of this stream with the two of us because we're going to give you a little something um, to tell you what you can expect in the next twenty four hours. We're going to give you a real solid emotional and thematic spoiler. I'm, I'm going to say it. That's what I'm want. looking forward to this. He's been bigging up how great this is going to be. I, I am. I am, I am literally sorry. I've got my popcorn ready. Um, other thing I want to say, Erwin asked a very nice question. How are you guys doing? How are you doing, Jim? Um, I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> um, I was. Um, I had four hours sleep last night. Yeah. Um, oh, and you've got a friend. Got a friend. Um, we, <laughs> I'd, and and just been mad all day, just writing update after update and working on stuff to show you on the camera. So we've got all the. Uh, I don't know if you can see all of the stuff on the table is. A really nice, sure, um, yeah, really nice. Oops, which way am I? Going? The uh, sort of quality of these. This is not a final stuff. This is all mock-ups, and we've got this really great uh, guys in in Paris who do us mock-ups uh, in very nice quality, and so that we can show you the kind of you know the kind of yeah. things you're going to see in the oops, which way am I? Yeah. The, uh, the kind of thing quality. This this is not. A, it looks like a final product, but it's not. It's just a. Um, you know, a working kind of working copy that was where we are now. We've got things we're going to improve, but these are these are bulletproof. These are these are great. These... <laughs> um, okay, I think we've anyway, got lots so of people in. Which, which working on stuff. Hi, hi, I am. By the way, I was buzzing last night. Like I left the stream last night, absolutely uh, wired with happiness. The first the first four hours were absolutely unbelievable. I think um, I went to bed at sort of like half twelve, and I think it was maybe two o'clock that I got over. Uh, I think 12. yeah. I think um, I was just I was well. shaking with like happiness and energy and just like it was a crazy opening evening or afternoon depending on where you are in the world. Um, so thank you. So one more time before we get into all the kind of frequently asked questions, guys, if you're asking questions to ensure I don't miss them, please pop them in the Q&A section up there and that way they'll save them, and then that way I can come and, um, and answer them directly yeah. right at the yeah. end so we don't miss anything. So please, please, please do that. Okay. What are, come, what are some of the things we've heard um, most regularly in the first 24 hours? So, how many acts are in the core box? How many box? acts are in the core box? Core box has three adventures. Mm -hmm. uh, that's three stories, three, three, based on three different 
short stories from Robert Howard. Uh, so three adventures. Each adventure is made up of a number of acts. Mm -hmm. In the core box, there's a one, one act, a one, two act, and one three act. The six acts yeah. all together. Now, how big is an act? An act is a three or four hour gaming session. It sort of depends on how many people you have, how chatty you all are, and so on. We have a safe system, so you can break that down into two or three pieces if you want. Um, basically, it's if you think of a scene like we have here mm -hmm. as one chapter, it's a scene like this. And this scene may take 20 or 30 minutes to play. So you can imagine in 10 chapters in an act, six acts, that's 60 chapters, about half of which are scenes, half of which are stories. There's an awful lot of gameplay in there. And that's assuming you only play it once. Yeah. And then, of course, you can replay it and... Try the multiple different angles, so how much try stuff the nightmare is, moves, How much but... stuff is in the core box? Lots and lots of hours worth of play, many sessions. Yeah, many, many dozens if you only literally do it once, but there's no reason you couldn't do each um, act multiple times and increase the difficulty and give yourself a bit of flair and mix around the, the, the virtues so you have a different asymmetrical feeling each time you play. There's, there's tons and of And play it solo and play it when we hopefully get to yeah. the uh, uh, competitive mode, play it competitive, yeah. all of which spin out quite a lot on how you, how you work it. Yeah. One of the other questions we had was, can I get multiple early birds? So can I get multiple yeah. right hands of doom? Yes. Um, if you pledge for an early bird, then all of the copies of the game you get will be counted as an early bird yeah. in, the, in the final uh, reckoning in the pledge manager. Mm -hmm. So if you pledge for an early bird now, and then you get to the uh, pledge manager and you decide you want a second copy for your friend or a gift or whatever, then that copy will also be treated as an early bird. Yeah. So essentially, if anyone back in John or Bark, it'll be similar. There'll be one option for additional copies of the Puritan Pledge and another option for it specifically only accessible to the people that did back the early bird. There you can add another one, another one yeah. that will include that. So that'll be yeah. handled by the pledge manager. One person put that in BGG today, which I actually loved. He said, if you think you're going to pick up a second one, put an extra bit of pledge money onto the Kickstarter itself because that'll help us hit more stretch goals yep. more quickly so we have to give you more. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, if you're not too sure, wait for the pledge manager then and then you know hold off until that. Yeah. It's whatever whatever suits you guys best is, is, is the key. I'm going to answer this question now a little loosely because I know it will come up a lot and we might talk about okay. it again later. But can you please tell me if we're going to translate the game into another language other than the English and okay. French, i.e. Spanish? What I'm just going to say, I'm going to draw a kind of line with this at the moment. I don't think we're going to delve into it because we are very, very, very well, actively talking I, about I, it. I, I can because I've been talking with yeah. it about people all day and I've been organizing stuff on this already. Okay. Do you want to say what we're going to do or what we're talking about doing? No, I could say what we're, what we're at. Well, I can tell you where it's got to. Yeah. Um, the, the game box, the printed game box, will be done in two languages, English and French. Yeah. That is what we can do in the scope of this project. We looked very hard at this. And we simply don't have the numbers to do Spanish, German, or whatever. However, we really like the idea of doing the languages. So what we've done is we've got two different threads that we're exploring to try and get Spanish, mm -hmm. for example, uh, is the one we looked at first because they were the most vocal. In the... Yeah. So we started with Spanish. There are two ways we can do this. One of them is uh, as a third party uh, language pack that will be available after the Kickstarter. Yeah. So we were talking to people. We met a bunch of guys at Essen who do this, and that's their business. That's what they do. So we thought, well, that's fine. That's their expertise, so we do that. So we're talking with them. We haven't got an agreement with them yet, so we don't know if it's going to happen. So we're not going to promise you anything. We don't expect to have an agreement in during the campaign. Yeah. So we aren't going to say that's going to happen, but that's one thing we're exploring. So that would be a, an add-on pack of the translatable things from a third party. Sure, sure. Good like. I bought Gloomhaven. I bought a sticker set yeah. from a third party to reuse the, yeah, the maps and so on. Sinister so Fish games. Yeah, Sinister Fish. Awesome. Yeah. Sinister Fish. Yeah. So I, that's that kind of thing. So it's it's a kind of licensed or agreed thing that will be. That's, that's one thing we're looking at. And again, because it's a licensed game, we've got to make sure that um, our licensor is happy with the way we're doing sure. that and so on. So it's not quite as simple. Uh, the other thing is a. So that's one thread. The other thread is. Uh, We've uh, been talking all day with a guy who's a translator. He's Spanish. He's very keen to do some work with us. And so we're, we're getting him to, um, to do some work with Joan of Arc because we've got just yeah. finished Joan of Arc files he can work on. And he's working with our translator, our in-house translator. 
to make sure that he's got the right kind of format files and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So we are working on with a Spanish fan as a translator professionally. So we, we, we expect the quality that we want, which is one of the problems with mm -hmm. lots of different ways of doing translations. Um, so basically the answer is, yes, we hear you. We want to do this as well, but economically, it's not something we can do in the core box, sorry, in the printed set along with English and French, but we are exploring other routes. We will not have, this is important to say, we cannot give you a final answer of how this works until we absolutely know what it is, and that wouldn't be expected yeah. till after it, the Kickstarter. Cool. So you, yeah. you can have faith in us and back for the cold copy, and I don't know, or not. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit of to and fro with this one. Um, and we don't want to say that, yes, we're absolutely going to do anything until we know 100% that we can deliver. That, that, that's right. I mean, the problem, the problem for us is partly economic because in order to get something with, I mean, the full, the full pledge, if you get through all of our stretch goals and all the rest of it, there will be a huge amount of stuff, many, many adventures. And that is a vast undertaking to not only translate yeah. and then lay out, but also print mm -hmm. and collect all of that stuff. So the minimum quantity is not small, uh, just to make it economically viable. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're talking about, we, we estimate the, uh, which leads on to another question actually about, about shipping rates. Um, we estimate that the core pledge with stretch goals when we finish will be what, 10 kilos? Yeah, yeah, exactly that. 10 kilos, that's a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's worth saying, so we're talking about the shipping. I think one of the questions we had, you know, why was the shipping set the way it is? The first thing is we're very conservative. And we, we basically are kind of planning and estimating for what the entire stretch goes in. If we do hit all the stretch goals that we're going to, which of course we hope that we will. Yep. So you do not get a nasty surprise in the pledge manager. Yep. It turns out the estimates were $10 too low. And if the shipping turns out to be lower than we have estimated for, we will charge you the lower amount of shipping. Yep. Because the shipping is something that you guys, of course, unfortunately have to pay. We don't like shipping. We don't like it anymore well, than nobody, you guys do. Well, nobody. I mean, it's the, it's it's, the same on every kick. I back yeah. lots of Kickstarters. It's the same on every Kickstarter. Um, and, you know, we're, we are just, uh, we're shipping large, heavy boxes around the planet. Yeah. So it costs money. There's just no way around it. I mean, we've spent, we've done, we've come off, uh, we've, we've worked on Mythic Battles, we worked on Joan of Arc, we've spent months and months and months talking to every shipping company we can find. We've had lots of backers uh, for both of those campaigns saying, why don't you try this lot, why don't you try that lot? And so we've talked to all these people and um, we've got the best rates we can find anywhere from anybody. Yeah. And uh, it's still, not cheap but then as i said i mean these are not physically small things and they're not light either no no i just we just had to chat there uh Dubilar says his order for junior arc is 65 kilograms yeah. and the delivery guy is a former friend of his daughter that's karma not quite sure what he's alluding to there but no but um <laughs> that's a lot of stuff for your post by the camera but yeah but i mean 65 kilos that's not a small box to deliver no ab absolutely not um okay so we'll kind of skip on we had another couple of questions Will there be an all-in? Yes. Yes. Yes, there will. It will be, at the moment, I think the, the estimate is $320, but we're not 100% sure about that yet because obviously it depends on where we get to. We're skyrocketed. Campaign. Like the first the first 20 of hours have been incredible. Um, so we, we will release that later on during the campaign. Once, once, we once, we've, yeah, once we've released things, once we've shown you what the add-ons are, when we get to the end of that process, towards the end of the, uh, towards the, end of the campaign, we'll announce that officially with a a guaranteed yep. price and so on. Cool. Um, what about added extras? Um, so the things like card sleeves, things like neoprene mats, for example, because we know they were very popular with Joan of Arc. Um, what we're basically saying um, to this one is that we're very interested to add those things back in, but if we do, it will be in the pledge manager. That's These right. will be optional add-ons that you can choose to have in there, nice to have, not must have sort of yeah, things. And, it's, and, and that, so that they won't be part of the, of the all-in. The all-in, or well, we're not going to call it that because it's not everything we could ever possibly do. There are one or two things that we know we're going to do in the pledge manager that will not be in the. Uh, it will be a kind of it's called a virtuous pledge. Yeah, well, yeah, we're, we're touring with like virtuous. We're playing with, like virtuous we're playing with different well, names yeah. for the for the kind of the complete the complete collection of all the things we offer in the Kickstarter pledge, which is a bit long-winded, but that's what it is. Uh, and there are a few things that we wanted to add to the pledge manager that were things like sleeves that not everybody will want. Yeah. Whereas, uh, in contrast, the stuff that we're adding for this sort of 
pseudo all in pledge are all their their adventures, their miniatures, their it's cards. Content, it's, it's, it's absolute pure game content. There's no tap. There's no fluff. There's no peripheral nonsense. There's no <laughs> you know plushies and dice bags and any of that stuff. It's all just you heard solid it here game first. Content. Jake wants plushies, Solomon Kings, guys. Make it happen. Mm. <laughs> no, I think so. The, the key is that everything you no. see on the Kickstarter page will be encompassed in the audit. Absolutely yeah. everything on the Kickstarter page, the all-in will cover it all. We're not going to add anything on the Kickstarter that's going to offset that. If you get the all-in, you get everything. But then there's a lot of option extras will come up in the pledge manager. We, yeah. we will do that again. And, and yeah, absolutely. The and Solomon McKeon hats for the pledge manager. Um, they they are surprisingly expensive. We it, actually costed we, some of those. We really did have a look. I I might make an origami style template thing. Yeah, if you can do, I mean, go for it. Yeah. PDF A3 paper. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's bound to be something we can do. There, there is. There must be. But they they are. Yeah, absolutely. They're surprisingly costly. Yeah, the, 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 you've got to make the belt, the buckle. It's got. Yeah. You can't. You can't. When it comes to puritan garb, you can't cut corners. You need to. Uh, no um, quality. Those are the main. Anything else you can think of that today that cropped up that really needed? Um, those were the main ones we had. I think the other ones are related primarily to game play, which we're going to kind of okay, get, we'll to get, get to. Okay, we'll get to yeah, yeah. Um, um, so I think the I mean the message about how how much and what is in the core box. I've written some updates about this as well. We'll be doing a two or three parter about what's in the core box, the stories that are in the core box. But I think the real question behind that is how much content is there? Yeah. How much gameplay is there? And the answer is loads. And you know, there's lots of different ways to replay this. Yeah. There's lots of different um, combinations or experience because each of the virtues is different. The experience of playing in different combinations and different numbers sure. under different people, it's just very different. Anyway, so yes, so I wouldn't worry that that you're you're buying something that's got one playthrough. Uh, I'm not gonna mention any particular games, but some games you play and you can play them once and that's pretty much it. <laughs> and it's like it's like buying your, your fifty dollar computer game and you get eight hours out of it and then you go, well I've done it now. It's no, that's not where we're at. I hate that. So um, I don't do yeah. games that do that. Uh, pit people stay until the end of the stream. I'll have something for you, buddy. That's all I'm gonna say. Everyone can pay attention to the, the chat. Uh-huh. So one thing someone asked, I mean, it's worth kind of saying this, just make sure anyone's aware. What what can I do when the all-in comes in? How do you upgrade from the Puritan pledge? It'll just become a new pledge. It's also. a new pledge, yeah. The idea is that we're, we're experimenting with different ways. This way, uh, this time we're going to do a second pledge that will be uh, everything that we offer yep. in the Kickstarter in one pledge. So you just simply manage your pledge, click the manage your pledge button, change your pledge to the new one, and you've That's done it. And um, one thing I say actually that was a question we got quite a bit, and we're going to make it more clear on the page. But this is a Kickstarter exclusive game. This is not going to retail distribution. However, we will have retail pledges, which gives the option for legitimate retail stores to pick up a, a small number of the core pledge or even some of the all-ins if they want to. Um, and they will get the same things that you guys get at the same time, delivered in the same the same way. If they're not getting it separate at all, they're essentially just getting store copies that they can then sell rather than straight through the Kickstarter. So. You will not be able to pick this up if you don't get in Kickstarter. Just be very clear on that. Back it now if you want it. What about illegitimate retail stores? Illegitimate re retail stores have to send me pictures of their pillow fort style shops. I have a very set requirement. <laughs> you make a pillow fort, you put a set of a can and a pandemic in there, and that to me is an illegitimate. That becomes an illegitimate. And then okay. we send them copies. Yeah, for free. Okay. <laughs> I will accept. No, we're we'll going to get pictures. how many pictures of pillow forts are we going to get? <laughs> I'm the kind of person that will treat pillow fort pictures for for places. Maybe, no. That's no, you know, out your own pocket. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so shall we get into the meat? So just as a quick reminder, keep popping your Q&A questions up there. We'll yep. come to them at the end of the stream and go back through every single one. I, I like this magic space it's in the middle of you, nowhere. Yeah. I, I, Oh, I can, I'm, I can see it. Uh, there we go. We'll share it together. There it is. Uh, there it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> These guys are starting to build pillar pillar forts. Amazing. I so, how many people have we got now? Do we get everybody over from the other 370, one? 370. So we're still so, missing. I hope so there's another hundred still sitting in the other. <sighs> Sick one. This is a really. It's really slow. Disappointing is... live. Uh, we've also just hit 650,000. Is that right? Is that correct? We have just hit 650,000. And we're Excellent. only 43 backers away from 6,000. Amazing, backers. guys. Absolutely amazing. <sighs> I need to sleep tonight. I'm going to be buzzing We've, again. I'm going to be just wired. This is more backers than Joan of Arc. 
In fact, hold on. More money than Joan of Arc. So let me have a guess. What can I tease At you? this time. Oh, I'm going to tell you guys right now. There's a there's a mini coming at 680. There's a new mini coming at 680. And we're actually, now we're starting. So just hit 650. Do you want to see? You can see. I'll let you see. I'll let those guys see. Yeah. Oh, that one. Oh, that one. So many minis you forget. 650. We, we, just, just, hit we, just, got we just hit 650. We just hit 650. So I haven't read the update for 650. Okay, guys, we, have, we, can't, keep, <laughs> we can't keep Jake too long because as soon as he's done here, he's going to go and have to go and write a whole bunch more updates. Um, so we just hit 650, which means we've just unlocked the first 25 chapter cards for a brand new act. It's the beginning of a new act. Yeah. Do you want to tell a little bit about that since we're here? Yeah, sure, sure. This is the beginning. But one of the things about Solomon Kane as a game is it's very different from a Joan of Arc or Mythic Battles in terms of what we can actually add in stretch goals because it's about stories, it's all about telling, telling stories. Yeah. So basically that's what most of the stretch goals are, is they're more stories. Yeah. Uh, but actually there's lots in a story, there's miniatures, there's cards, there's tiles, there's all sorts of stuff. So they take quite a long time to get through each yeah. one. So we've just started, 650 is the beginning of a new adventure. Uh, called Logor or is that a, the ogre? I'm really trying not to call it L'Oreal because it's that no, capital yeah, L, yeah, yeah, capital L, 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 big O, and just, yeah, but it's no L'Oreal. the ogre. Which apparently I, I I looked this up, and apparently the word ogre comes from 17th century France. That's where it appears. In, like, that's the etymology that, goes back there. That's epic. Oh, wow. So so it's actually it's one of the reasons why I did this story because yeah. this is one of the ones that we've made up. Yeah, we've added this to to the canon. Um, <laughs> But yes, I, I was doing this research, looking at different options and, and, and things, sort of hints that were in, in Howard stuff. And um, turns out Solomon Cain was kicking around medieval, uh, with, with 17th century France when the word was coined. So he could have so easily I thought, so done it. So it could have been him doing it. It could More have been him please. doing it. <laughs> so, so this was, this is a, uh, the whole idea was built around me finding out that's where the word came from. <laughs> and then so, so it comes Perfect. from there. Yeah. Um, anyway, so yes, that's the story. There'll be an update. I've written the update for the begin introduction of that, which explains a bit more about it, which you should see reasonably soon. Leo's got that. He's setting the artwork up and so on. <laughs> Sorry, Helican just ended me. An ogre who came from France. Hmm, I think I hated her. <laughs> <laughs> Photos or it never happened. One thing I just say is, well, just while we're still talking about stretch goals, at 6.20, you guys managed to unlock dual layer dashboards. Oh, and my few, favorite. Yeah, I, this is so <laughs> silly, but I was really looking forward to this one. But a few people ask, what does that mean? Okay. Um, can I grab one? For, actually, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll have one of Well, can I grab one of those? Yeah, and, sure, and then you sure. can describe essentially what a dual layer dashboard is, and I'll pop it here. Okay, dual layer so, dashboards are, are um, deceptively simple. They kind of do what they say on the tin. They are two layers of chunky card instead of one. You can see this is a big, thick piece of card. Dual layer dashboards are two layers of cards glued together. But the, the, the cunning trick is that you cut out holes in the top one so that you end up with recesses. So where you need tracks to put, uh, to put tokens or mm -hmm. cubes or dice or anything like that, they sit neatly in little holes that are made the right size and shape for them. So when you allocate things, so if you're holding on to reserve, it's nice, they're not going to squeeze away on you. That's right. They just sit where you want them. And, and there's something really satisfying there about really this. There really is, yeah. It <laughs> is just, I end up, the, the update is basically me saying how much I like them rather than anything else useful <laughs> about them. Um, it's, it's one of those things that I always find really, really uh, bizarrely appealing in, in a game. Mm -hmm. and. Um, it doesn't make the game better in any kind of gameplay sense. It's just nice to it have. It's just nicer. And <laughs> just, will we have dual layer uh, tracker boards? Yes, the... we will have the dual layer. The dual layer stretch goal makes the four virtue dashboards dual layer. So these these slots will be yep. recessed, and these slots will be recessed, and so on. Um, it makes this, which will I'll drop the tokens. Uh, yeah, makes this. You can see it's got. Show it here. Oops, wrong way again. So, so these won't slide around when I do this. They will, they will have places to sit. And because we've also made them plastic, and they will be big and chunky and stand up, they will stay where they were. And you yeah. can pick them up because they're big and chunky. One of the reasons we made them plastic, because, uh, because it means that they're, we can do the it was making them plastic was because I wanted to make the board dual layer. And if I made them dual layer and they were tokens, you wouldn't be able to pick them up pretty you easily. Stuck in <laughs> so, dual so, the so it was my, it was my excuse, but I had to make it dual layer 
So I had to find a way of <laughs> making these work. Behind anyway, the curtain of why we So yes, you. these will be dual layers. Where, so you'll get five, five dual layer big boards yeah. in the core box, except you guys are all getting stretch goals. So the uh, Providence board will also be dual layer. And any other boards that we might accidentally unlock in the future of the stretch goals in this Kickstarter will also be dual layer. Um, we have already seen the plastic track tokens. They were one of the first stretch goals unlocked, although I will say about some yep. of those plastic tokens you've seen, not all of them are final. Um, we will um, be kind of adapting and improving those. Yeah, we I can. think we can. But we wanted to give. We, we can, can do, do better. better. I bet not making too much noise. Sorry. Better. Um, excited. Yeah, a lot of some, lot of a lot of positive uh, responses to the dual led boards. And yes, I like To be honest, for them. us, they are they are very nice. The cost is really not a factor. These are something that I think we all they, having played the they, game for a while. Yeah, they, to they add. are kind of costly, but I don't care. So. <laughs> and and hey, World Forty Four. Ben won't let me yeah. do it. So. Thank, thank you so much for backing and welcome. You're in a very good place, sir. Um, and you thank are. you. Um, I will say that we did talk extensively about the Spanish version just sort of five minutes ago. If yes. you want to watch the replay, that's there. But long story short, as we are exploring options, we're absolutely looking to see what we can do. We have a couple sure. of things currently in the works triple layer, quad layer boards. These kids, these mad uh, crazy, kids. crazy kids. Crazy kids. Um, okay, let's get into the meat of this. Solo mode was one of the first huge things with the problem Solo mode. that we unlocked. And when Lee was on camera, he can show you shiny stuff in the Paris office, talk about the art and story. But we're here with the gameplay, the game designer. We want to talk about what that's going to feel like to play and how that's going to change the game from the normal one to four players when you put problems on the table. Well, the first thing, the first thing to know is there are actually two solo modes in Solomon Kane. Um, there are, there are, and they're quite distinct. When I first was working on this, I worked out how to play the four-player version. And when I first started doing it, that was kind of, it didn't really work at three. Had to, pretty much had to be four. Yeah. And so I thought, well, I want to play this solo as well. And solo is very useful for playtesting because I'm always there when they need me. <laughs> so I worked out a way of playing it with, with uh, solo where I played Providence. Now, one of the things when I play solo games, I quite like playing solo games when if the, if the game is about playing as this is playing a character and then I'm playing with other people, each one of them playing one character. I'm never very fond when when the solo mode says, oh, you have to play two or three yeah. because I want to play. I want the same experience that everybody else has that you have when you're playing them. With three you're or four players. I am sure. one. Yeah. I, I am the temperance or I am the cleric or yeah. I am whatever it is. I'm one thing. So I thought, well, let's let's make that how you play this solo. Mm -hmm. So I did uh, Providence, who is a kind of bigger, badder version of the, the virtue. She's a she's a uber virtue in a way, because she whereas each of the normal four cardinal virtues is very focused on one thing that they do best. They can do a little bit of other things, but they mainly do one, which is why you you need to work together so much, and that's part of the. The whole process of designing this is to, as a co-op was to make make you need the other players, so you have to deal with them. You yeah. need to, and you want to be saying, "Well, I'm going to give you this stuff so that you can do this, so that I can then do that," and the sequencing and all of that. Anyway, so you that is how the game normally works. But with Providence on her own, she can't rely on other people to do things for her. She has to be much more self-sufficient. So that's the kind of real difference: is that instead of playing as a sort of cooperative or collaborative game with other people where you know everybody's strengths uh, are balancing the weaknesses of the other players and you've got to try and organize between you to have certain things available yeah. at certain times and not to make sure that you well we've all got well we've all got really good fighting stuff now but we need to have a conversation with this guy <laughs> maybe we should organize that better between us so that you had a bit of this and you had a bit of that and I've got something else and so we've kind of covered all the bases Temperance has to cover all the bases on her own. So she has a, a different way of dealing with, and she's much more flexible in how she goes through her deck. So she has a different hand management system that allows her to bin things she doesn't want and Providence, cycle through. Yeah. So Providence, oh, yeah. Providence, yes. um, uh, Providence has a system where she can, she can bin things much more easily and go through her deck much more quickly. So she's more flexible in organizing the things she has. She's more self-reliant. She's not Much more self-reliant and much more able to uh, adapt quickly. Yeah because you can't rely on other people to cover bases for her that she, she's not good at. 
So it's a different kind of experience again because you you are it is a solo experience. You are designed to be operating with just her. Mm -hmm. um, having designed that, having worked that out, and grown quite fond of the way she worked, mm -hmm. I then worked out how to do a solo mode with the four normal kernel virtues as well. As well. <laughs> and so because and that's basically the same rules you apply for playing one, two, or three players with the four-player game. Yeah. You, you play all the virtues are involved, but you play, let's say the solo, you play one virtue mainly, but the other cards for the other ones, their resources are available. It's like they're hanging around in the background. Yeah, let's really expand on that, actually, because if okay. you don't mind talking no, about no, that no, more, because sure. we've had a lot of questions about how the game plays with two players or sure. three players, and we were very happy with how it was playing with less. Everything worked just fine. But we wanted to add a little bit of flavor to if there was a virtue well, not well, there. That's right. So, so I mean, it does actually work if you simply just ignore one of the virtues and play three virtues. It does actually work already like that. But it's kind of more fun if you imagine that the one that's missing is sort of hanging around in the background, just off screen. And so you get what, the way you represent that is you take their deck and you just lay it out. They're not there. You just lay out their deck. And, I can do this over here. Um, well, I mean, just, I think oh, people, get, I think people get the idea. Yeah, yeah. People get the idea. You lay out their deck, and then everybody else, so the dashboard isn't there, but their deck of cards with the actions, the virtue cards, are available. And everybody else treats these cards as an extension of their own. So in terms of, um, you, you normally you have uh, a card on each side of your dashboard, meaning they are active cards, they're available to use. If you've got a missing virtue, all of their cards are also active cards you're available to use. The difference and the interesting part comes that they're available to use for everybody, but each one of them is only one use per act. So across eight to ten across chapters. Across eight to ten chapters, you only have each one of them once. Yeah. So when somebody uses it, and it may not be you, mm -hmm. it's gone. And then maybe you wanted yeah. that later, but you've got to. Plan. So again, it becomes what it does is it's what it works really well for is it not only allows you to access the thing that that virtue was good at because that's what's represented in their deck, so you don't lose that from the sort of meta of what you have available as a group. Yeah. But it, it then gives you a whole other talking point about when we use that one thing that Prudence has that yeah. she can do to bump the. Danger, danger track down. That is slowly depleting. That is slowly depleting. And they go, well, look, look, we want to use that, but we've only got one go at that. Yes. It also gives you an interesting conversation about which ones you take in the first place, because having access to a, a, all of somebody's card deck at once all the time is better in some ways yeah. than only being able to access a couple of bits mm -hmm. at once. Yeah. But of course, you can come back and use these again. Yeah. You can get these back. You can't get these back. See, and that's for me. That's really curious because I love to see when people play through an act if they find a particular combination that they think this works really well. Yeah. Actually, having courage to play the supporting role in this act helped us hugely in this chapter and this chapter, yeah. and meant that I could guarantee that I broke out of the cage here. But yeah. then I struggled later on, and I'd I, I can't wait to hear the stories people kind of tell whenever they yeah. switch around the roles because they're so asymmetrical. Because, and, that, and that's the, the so so when you when you haven't got one of the virtues, they become just a, a, a deck of available cards, one off use for each thing. So they're still their power is still yep. there, their speciality is still there. So if I were playing two player, mm -hmm. we pick two of them who aren't there, and they're both of their decks go out. Yep. And if you're playing on your own, you can play with one one virtue, and then you have all the other three are in available support, to help yeah. in support but each of their cards is only available once, and that becomes a whole nother puzzle. That's completely different to playing the and province. And that is completely yeah. different to playing the province, but still works perfectly well, and is a really a great solo because, again, in both mm -hmm. cases, both Providence and in that version, yep. you are playing one character, yeah, we had and everybody else is kind of supporting. We had a fantastic question. Well, Ben's answered it, but I think it would be interesting for you to talk a little bit about it, if you like, Jack. Is sure. it a two to three player game? Can an unused virtue be placed on the board somehow? Can you use them? Because the second question that came forward, can you use them still to add them onto the board as strategic blockers? And this is maybe yes. a good point to yes, allude to these boards and what's changed. 
Um, if you guys have played the demos that we've been running at conventions and cons, we have developed the game considerably since then. Yes, and the answer is yes, you can put you other can put you can put other people on the board. Yes, you can. Um, only once though. Yeah. Because the placing the virtue on the board used to be something that the, the distinction between stuff that's on here and stuff that's in your deck, because each of the, the actions here, these are actions you can do, and these are actions you can do, but they're actually quite different because the ones on your board, you can always do them. They're always available. The ones on your cards, you only have two of your deck of 10 cards that are available at any one time. Then they, when you use them, go into discard, and they go to cycle back through into your hand and then onto the table again. So there's a, they come and go. He's predicting your questions, guys. He's right there. With, he has the questions. With, um, <laughs> with the, it used to be the case that placing your virtue on the board was an action on the dashboard. And now it is not. Now it is a card. Because that makes it much more interesting to, uh, to make, and much yeah. more important about moving the virtue on and off the board. So the decisions become that much harder, which was just makes it more interesting to play. So if you're playing, a, if you have a virtue that's not in play, you don't have access to their dashboard, but you do have access to their card that says place them on the board, mm -hmm. but you only have access to it once. So you have to pick a moment. So you've got to pick in the moment, you need that board. one. And that each of the virtues has a different aura. So we were playing a play testing something this afternoon where we needed explore. So temperance was the one we wanted in play. And I was actually playing temperance, but it makes a really big difference because I got to the point where I knew I wasn't, I played my card mm -hmm. so to put me on yeah. and I knew I wasn't going to get it back because there wasn't enough time. So, but at the same time I was kind of being threatened with shadows and I had to work out whether yeah. to, whether to sacrifice temperance to stop the shadows or you, are, are we okay up. to talk about that yeah yeah sure well, actually, the, well, yeah there is it so because anyone who's watched beast of war or watched the tricked out video or done a demo there was two very kind of distinct ways of playing that i kind of find when i was demoing the game with people some would just go straight at it they would try and solve the problem immediately they would run straight to the objective and just try and handle it like that others would be more methodical they would take mm. a round where everyone would work together to reserve dice donate dice and get a virtue or two onto the board and try and start controlling the board and those players took a bit of a risk because they left solomon time to be surrounded by shadows but then they set up sometimes these big walls of virtues that were creating tough tough problems for the shadows to deal with. Sure. So you've got the great way of making that yeah. more interesting. Well, the, the, yeah, the original rules, are, there's, there's some interaction between the shadows, which are the sort of essence of the bad guy. They're the kind of bad guy minions, the darkness minions that you see most frequently. They're always around. Uh, there was a, they, the way they interacted with Solomon Cain and the virtues and so on has changed a lot of times as I tweaked it and balanced it and so on. The virtue, version you would have seen in the demos on, on trick, um, Beast of War and Trick Track the when when the virtues were on the board the shadow could not move into the area that the virtue was in this worked in some ways but actually in the end it's it's too powerful for the virtues the problem is it was kind of if you let the the shadow move in willy-nilly and ignore the virtues that was too weak for the virtues so we have to try and find a balance point here and and the way that's the the, the one i came up with that worked best and this has actually proved to be really interesting in playtest is that when a shadow would move into a virtue's area, the virtue player gets to choose one of two things. Either they let the shadow move in, in which case both the shadow and the virtue are removed from the board. But no, normally when a, a shadow moves into a uh, Solomon Cain, he triggers, he disappears, but he triggers an event. If, if the shadow moves into the uh, virtue, then no event is triggered, but both are removed. That's one option. Or the shadow can choose to just stop, the, sorry, the virtue can choose to stop the shadow in his tracks, but the danger goes up one. And danger going up one is bad, but maybe the positional thing is important, yeah. as it sometimes is. Mm -hmm. And we've been finding a kind of 50-50 split about who, whether you let them go or not. So I was playing this game with, Temperance on the table, mm -hmm. it was, this, this thing was mostly about exploring. Temperance's aura is plus two, plus two to explore, which is really useful. And I was on the, on the board and I was kind of, and I'd accidentally cornered a shadow that I was probably gonna end up moving. Yeah. And the first time this happened, I just went, no, no, I will take the, take the, the Keep thing. The thing. I, Keep, I, I need to be on because I can't put Temperance back because I've not got the time to get my card out of the deck and then get it back in my hand and then get it on the table and then get, yeah. I, so I can't get the 
or a back if she comes off the table. Mm -hmm. And I ended up, we were, we were at danger eight. Oh, oh that is dangerous. <laughs> you were at danger that's, eight. That's, that's, <laughs> like that is, that's bad. That's we were four like, shadows worth of we had, we had two We had two, two darkness cards left. We were at danger eight. And I was thinking, I'm not sure we can actually do this if temperance is or it isn't there. Yeah. But I really don't want to bump it on to stage nine. nine <laughs> because if you get off to, if you run off the track, or if you run off any of these tracks, you lose. So if, if Solomon Cain's strength or clarity or compassion goes to zero, then he's just out of it. He's, he's either unconscious or he goes crazy or whatever. So he's out. If danger goes above 10, then it's got so dangerous you've yeah. just been overrun. No it's it just no chance. So it was a really interesting kind of balance. And in the end, I, I, I took the danger hit the first time, but the second time I just couldn't, I just wasn't feeling safe so because means... darkness cards can add danger. So you, with nine danger, yeah. you're too close to comfort for the end. So the, the tweaks you've made me, now you're going to have to really try and plan a little bit about when you're going to need your virtue. That's you're, right, yeah, you're, yeah. You're going to need to also choose when you manifest them. And then you also choose when when you need to sacrifice them, either by getting them to move in and yeah. aggressively attack a shadow and take them out, or by blocking until the point that you cannot risk the danger of anymore, and finally your virtue just has to give in. And, and that's it's all about adding not complicated rules, but decision points. Yeah. And this again is very simple, uh, but it just means and changing the uh, changing the place the da place the uh, virtue on the board to a card. Mm -hmm suddenly means that it's not a trivial thing because what was happening was people were just going, oh, I'll, I'll just stick the virtue on the board because I've got a couple of dice. Yeah. I'll, I'll just put the virtue on the board. And it became kind of moving on and off was, was, was nothing. It didn't really matter. You just do it when you could, sure. because why not? And putting it in the card deck suddenly makes it a big issue because it's a, a th when do I do it? Yeah. I'm not going to, you know. And then when, you in, when you're threatened with coming off, that again, coupled the two together, when do I come off? When, oh, well, yeah, but what, and then you've got another interesting conversation between the players about how about I risk what, you can you be, can you, can you take that risk? Do you want to do that or can you cover me with this and can yeah. you, can we do that? Can you take this and I'll, I'll come off, but you can come you on need, there. You need to move you in need there. To, do you have the you nice need to devote Somebody, you? yeah, and, do you have the card? Do you have the action available? Yeah. Oh no, I spent it already and I got knocked off by that other shadow and, yeah, and so on. Anyway, so. <laughs> Lots of little tweaks, lots of little tweaks about, and it's all just about adding extra interesting points of decision, uh, adding replayability, telling a better story, telling a more interesting story. Love it, love it. Expect, guys, we have, as I said, we have about half a dozen different videos planned where we're going to specifically play games and, and different scenarios as we expand through the world, and we're going to show you guys more and more gameplay. We're also going to do more of these interviews and chats about how the things are changing, so expect to see it develop. We are not going to shy away from things that we want to improve. We're going to embrace them. We hope you guys will as well as we go through. Um, and yes, thank you. Our Erwin saying it's very interesting to hear you talk about this stuff, so good. thank you for thank sharing, you. Jack. Um, Shall we do some questions and answers? Yeah, let's do some questions and answers. Okay, let's go through. So I'll try and go from bottom to top here. I think this is the most recent, but I'll get through all that are currently listed. Um, does your deck ever refresh for free in an act? For example, in chapter 10. The, the Virtue last, deck. Yes. The Virtue deck does. When the Virtue deck runs out, then it reshuffles. Okay, so if you're willing to go through every so If you're willing to go card, through every single card, then you will get to the end and it will reshuffle. You don't have to ever pay for it. But paying for it to shuffling your discard back into your deck only costs one dice. It's much cheaper now. Well, one, yeah. well, it's 50% cheaper. Yeah, I mean, so what I, I've changed the price because it wasn't, the restructure of the tur of the hands yeah. meant that it wasn't as good. Yeah. And and so, you know, you will get your cards back anyway if you mm -hmm. want to wait. So two is just too expensive. Yeah, okay. Um, Solomon Cain, will it be a challenging game, Shark asks, or will it be more like a casual game? The, in the, the, intention, is, the intention is to make it reasonably difficult because I think that's where most people seem to find looking at reviews talking to other gamers playing games myself I think most people find they want to play something that's quite challenging it's got to challenge it. yeah absolutely. it's got to be difficult not impossible but difficult I think at the moment at the moment we're running it slightly too easy mm -hmm. but there's lots of balancing yet to be done so that's not an issue there's lots of ways to balance it as well so that's not not a problem but at the moment we're slightly too easy I want to make it a bit more challenging uh, the idea of the nightmare deck is to allow you guys to ramp up that difficulty yourself 
and to choose how hard you want it to be. And also not only just say, um, and this is something I've not seen much, is that rather than just most, most of the time when you want difficulty, you choose at the beginning mm -hmm. and then that's it. You, you're stuck with however hard sure. you set it. Um, with, with the nightmare cards, the idea is that on a per chapter basis, you choose how many you want to eat. Wow. <laughs> Wow. So you can you go, I got my face kicked in on the last one. I'm just going to dial those nightmare cards back a bit. Okay, okay. So maybe I'll put one or two in. But yeah. the next time you go, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm owning this. This is just, you know, I'm, nice. I'll put five in. And then you go, ouch. <laughs> ouch, that hurt. But once you, you know, you commit at the beginning of each chapter, but you can change it all the way through. And then at the end, you see how many you've actually gone through, and that becomes a score that you can do something else with. But that's another story. Yeah. Yeah, so I think there's a bunch of opinion. Guys like the fact that you can you can balance it, that you can add nightmare cards, that you can tweak it. Obviously, it relies on you guys to be true to yourselves and not make it so easy that you just breeze through whenever you're having a hard time because that would be Well, the thing is, you know, who do you cheat if you do that? You don't cheat me. You cheat yourself. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, you, you, you make the game, well, you know, and you have fun where you, the way you want. Yeah. Okay, um, so uh, Gilliam Fong asks, um, does the not schizophrenic solo mode with Providence have different difficulties of the normal multiplayer game? <laughs> That's a great The not schizophrenic one. As I so, said, even, even on the supposedly schizophrenic one, you are playing a single virtue. Yep. You just have the access to some of the powers of the others who are around and about, but yep. they're, not, they're not there in the same way that you are. You are playing one, one guy or girl, sorry. Sorry, virtues. Um, I'm just going to check. So sorry. Alchemy says, hi, Wall. Well, sorry, what was his question? I was, I was oh, actually rambling on. I don't think I answered his question. I what just, was his, I just love what was his question. actual question? In, in Providence mode, um, will you be able to treat the difficulty? Will there be different levels of reverse? Well, yes, because the, the nightmare cards are separate from, yeah. from they, that whole process. So the nightmare cards, any kind of style of play, whether you're playing solo, A, solo, B, uh, solo schizo, so, solo not. <laughs> <laughs> um, whether you're playing three, four, two, three, four player, whether you're playing uh, versus mode, whatever you're playing, the way the nightmare cards work is entirely separate to that choice of style of play. So you can always tweak the, the difficulty. I'd be a flip a coin kind of guy. Heads, we add a darkness, tails, we don't just run for every, every chapter. We just, what's the, what's the, what's the <laughs> saying? Well, what's you could. I mean, again, that's the, the perfectly valid way of doing it. Um, Thierry says, in Africa, so can fight, fight vampires. Do you plan to craft vampire minis? No, we don't. No, no, no we won't do we that. We're not going to. Who would, who would want vampire minis? We're not going to do that. <laughs> of course we're going to do that. Of course vampires. Oh, Yay. it's going to be good. Uh, Hel Helican asks, is there any plan for 3D terrain elements? This is something we've had before, and I've said, 35 mil scale, obviously, being what it is, we are going to have some nice little incidental stuff that are specifically tied to stories. There are, but scenery and terrain. There are there are a couple, but the problem is we have a we have a limited kind of um, number of sculpts we can make. Plastic budget. It's a kind of well, it's a kind of sculpting time budget yeah. as much as anything else. The guys can make a certain number of things, and we can afford to mold certain number of things. You know, in, in you know, obviously, there's at the end of the day, we have to be able to make this stuff for a certain price and and, and get it to you guys. So we have a we have a budget of. Um, I'm not going to tell you because how many because it's a it, it's a surprise. You'll see at the end how many we've got. Anyway, if I want to make a piece of scenery, I have to not make a miniature of a character or three or four, or, depending on. And so if I, if you, I mean, someone was saying. We should do barrels, and I thought, well, barrels aren't very interesting. Would you rather a barrel, or you rather have barrels, or, or you know, one of these tribal warriors, or another sculpt of a pirate, or a, a soldier, or you know, I mean, it's, do you know what? That's a good, good segue, Jack. Good segue, buddy. I think, I think people, most people, would rather have a miniature of a cool figure than a miniature of a table and chairs. And it, it becomes that because although this is the thing is people don't really value them in the same way, but they take sculptors' time, they take they cost, they take up space in the mold, which costs money. Just the same. I mean, the mold maker doesn't care what he's making the mold of. <laughs> All that matters is how big a space it takes up in the mold. And furniture starts taking up space really fast. Oh, but G, G Brano does make a very good point. Which is have as sitting on a barrel. You could have as sitting on a barrel. I'm just quite happy that I'm not being put in the game as a barrel. <laughs> um, so I'll take sitting on a barrel, dear Brown. We had my cat sitting on a barrel in Joan of Arc. We did, we did. 
Um, so yeah, I wanted to show this very quickly that to give the, time scale. an exact example of what Jack is talking about. These are a pair of the, the soldiers that you guys unlocked a few stretch goals um, earlier today. And again, we're doing a pair of two, but then we're also got two more of these guys, but different, different sculpts. Different sculpts yeah. We didn't want to do four generic ones. We wanted to keep the flavor, keep it mixed up, and keep you guys with unique it's striking, it's striking a balance between how, I mean, we've got an enormous number of unique sculpts in, in this whole of Skull and Cain. Huge number, way more than most. I mean, you see a lot of games and people tend to judge them by how many sculpt, how many minis do you get? But really, that's not, that's not an, all the important expense. A lot of the expense is in how many different unique sculpts you have. Yeah. We have a huge number here. Very few of the miniatures are repeated. Yeah, the idea is that because it makes it look characterful. That characterful is the literally the best word you could use. It's not yeah. eight of something, twelve of something yeah. that is going to fill up your board. It's everything should matter. Every villager that you have to see or interact with, or talk to, every I don't want to give any spoilers away. Every well, sacrifice that happens should hurt. One and one of the things actually, this it, it's interesting here because I actually argued against the shadows being different miniatures because mm -hmm. one of the things we, we could have done the shadows as different miniatures and I argued not to do that yeah. because whereas I want the other figures to be characterful and different, I want the shadows to be faceless yeah. and not characters, not individuals because they are not they are absolutely ciphers for this whole idea of the the threat and the unpleasantness that they should be not. A character. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah, we had a few questions saying, uh, Jake, shouldn't you be writing a 666 update sometime soon? <laughs> Interestingly, I did that last time. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. did a 666 yeah. update. I've done that. I have that t shirt. We are, we're all about you and innovative stuff. Yeah, yeah. we've done 32 mil, we've done skirmish games, we've done Battle narrative 15 mil, and now we're on to 32 mil. 16, 16 sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, <laughs> <laughs> we're also now on the narrative and cooperative and new stuff yeah. where we're nothing if not innovative. Yeah. Um, let's carry Did on six, 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 six last time. That's, that's yeah. passe. Well, yeah. That was last time. That was last Keep Kickstarter. Up, guys. Come on. Yeah, um, do you know what quality the cardstock will be and will it have a linen finish? And I can just say we had a whale of a time rubbing a bunch of cards. Oh, yeah, last yeah. We, week. Love, we, were we love cards. I've uh, given it some of this. Pass me that one. Yeah, yeah. we oh, had loads oh, of samples. Well, pass me that one. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I like that um, one. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I would make make Benoit cry with the quality I keep yes. asking for. Um, the, the, we are going to be choosing pretty decent quality. Um, have to be steady to settle on a to settle on one. I think, and um, this isn't gospel because I yeah. think what we were using was three hundred GSM Black Core. I think. think because we were looking at that, and then we yeah. found that three three hundred GSM. Black core costs a certain amount. 300 GSM German black core costs twice the price. The German black core, man. Obviously, the German stuff is pretty high quality. <laughs> but I couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> um, so, yes, we will be doing pretty high nice quality. We will confirm that in a future update for sure. Yeah, we'll, 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 once we we'll, that. Yeah, we'll double check that. Um, and and it, it's, it's a, it will be a very expensive stretch goal to upgrade the cards. We did talk about that. Because there are so many cards, Bumping them to a a significant, I mean, so so you can tell because we've been as as I said, we've been fondling cards for days. Fondle factor. Um, so that it's only worth spending the extra money if you can actually tell when you've got them in your hand. Yep. Oh and no! To make that difference was going to cost an awful lot when we upgrade hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, hundreds of cards. Of Deke, I'm sorry. I think Deke just missed just missed the end of the 24-hour early bird pledge. But do not despair. We can say first of all, it wasn't just for early birds. If you still want to get it, you will be able to pick up. That will be an add-on you can have. It will be ten dollars. That so you can still get that. Okay. Or can we talk about the other way to get it? We said earlier, everything yeah, that comes yeah, in yeah, the yeah. Kickstarter well, all in yeah. means everything that's on the Kickstarter will come in the all in. Yeah. So. That doesn't tell Join you. those two dots. Yeah, exactly. You'll, um, we're not going to leave anyone out. We very much appreciate the early support. And that's no one get gets left free. behind. There you go. All forgotten. Um, oh, okay. Which movie is so, that from? Um, oh, my goodness. There's, there's just so many questions coming through. Can you play with multiple versions? We've talked about that at length yes. today. If you did miss it, we did assume finishes and hit the replay button, but then you can get all that. We talked about that for 15 yep. minutes there. And can we get custom card sleeves? Card sleeves will be in the pledge manager. Will they be custom? Custom? 
I guess for each virtue to have her, her own style for the darkness of it. You mean you mean printed backs? You mean is that um, short? You mean, short these, that. these are these are um, these are see through. They've got two cards in, but these are yeah. these are see through. What you I'm thinking what you what I'm guessing is you mean with a printed back? Printed back. That would be a custom card for you. To me, that yeah. that that would be a, yeah. Um, well, I I'm not seen anyone cost it no, so i don't know because because we're going to do the the cards gorgeous to begin with it, it's a shame to cover them and because the because the printing quality on sleeves and the printing quality on card yeah. the printing quality on card wins every single time so if you've got clear sleeves you get to see the printing and i think that's probably the way we'll go especially because not many people would buy them at the cost they would have to be yeah. charged for because you're going to buy a lot of them um, who he wants to leave everything. I, I, hope, I hope you understand me. Please forgive me. If anybody um, in the chat is, is French speaking primarily, or anybody and um, knows of somebody who kind of unfortunately can't watch because we're in English, we're going to have a huge amount of lives um, from Leo in France and we'll absolutely get Leo to do some lives where he actually is completely in French or he does um, some in both and answers questions in both. <coughs> um, unfortunately, although Ben can read Greek, I can order a beer in Spanish and. So I can muddle by in German sometimes German. on a good day. Unfortunately, yeah, we, we, we can't do it from here, but we will absolutely do that over the course of the campaign. What I will say is the Kickstarter page itself is in English on Kickstarter, but there is a mirror in French on www.mythicgames.net. Also, every single update we do on Kickstarter will be mirrored in French on, on the Mythic side. Games website. Um, believe we're we're me, catching um, up for the moment. Once we've yeah. caught up, then we'll we'll be able to to do it pretty quickly. We have we now have an in-house translator who's here full time, who works with us full time, and we actually have three other people mm -hmm. who can all who can all do who all do translation work for us. So we've got way more resources than we had last time with Joan of Arc, and we're on it. Yeah, any of the French ambassadors, if you wouldn't mind typing that into chat, if you let them know about the website and the the fact that everything will be mirrored there, that would be great, and we will have some French live streams. Please do not think that we don't love you guys as much as we always do. We highly recognize our French community. It means the world to us. I just, just wanna, don't want to embarrass myself by trying to speak French, but maybe someday, maybe someday. Um, so let me quickly go through some more questions. There's so question, so many questions. Go on. I think read them out. Don't I tell me the lots. Just we've read them out. Those. I think we've answered those. Any chance to have human-sized posters of Solomon? Right. Like them? Um, um, we talked uh, on the stream last night about potentially doing some wallpapers, some mobile phone backgrounds, and some social media and um, wallpapers and such for Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And um, I asked people to go to the comments and let us know that you're interested in that. I don't think there's been a huge response. Maybe maybe full size Solomon Keynes would be a difference. I'm not sure. I, I don't think that's something we're probably. Doing. I, I I very much doubt it. They're they're actually rather. I mean, this is promotional stuff and stuff we use at, at shows and so on, yeah. and they are really pricey. Um, and we don't buy lots ourselves, no. much as they are lovely. <laughs> um, I'm going to keep going through a couple. I'm going to skip a couple of questions here that we've kind of darted around. Mm -hmm. um, how many virtues have you got on pocket for stretch goals? Um, Eric, you're just going to have to stay, buddy. You're just going to have to follow the campaign. We're not. That's there's, there's big miniatures to come. Big minis to come. Um, what was the big mini that Leo teased and you told him not to spoil, but he never did? I can't remember which one he did, but I will tease a big mini at the end of this stream. Um, Alex. Can't stop him. Can't um, stop him. I, keep trying to, I keep trying to say, we've got to save some goodies up for later. No, as and Leo, bad as each other. Uh, Alex said, I paid $300 for shipping for the time of Legends, Joan of Arc, all in play. Should I expect to see him for Solomon Cain? So I'm not sure where you are, Alex. Depends on where you are. Yeah, yeah if you pop your question into the comments, um, we can try and answer you there on the actual Kickstarter page. And um, if Ben's in chat, he can maybe have a, have a quick talk to you. Um, but it depends on where you are. What I can say, though, is the all in uh, for Solomon Cain will be at least 10 kilograms less. Yeah, the all in for Solomon Cain will, will be smaller. Be. Yeah, it will be smaller um, and lighter and therefore costs so, less. Yeah. Um, Other things being equal. Uh, this is. I'm not sure of this word. You're more intelligent than me. You might have to read this. Ali Batar said there will be elements of scenography. Scenography. Will, it's scenography? a. It's a. He's French. Or will miniatures be just characters? Love your work. He's, he's asking. He's asking about whether we'll have uh, 3D scenery and stuff. Wow. Um, and uh, well, we, 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 we answered that already. In, in, if you yeah. Um, 
Um, Short answer is no, not many. There will be one or two, but not many. Yeah, and Alchemy asks, how we upgrade to the Virtuous Pledge work for those with the early uh, bird pledges? It will be fine. It will be fine. It will you be will fine. You will not lose out on anything. Fret not. You will get all the goodies. Um, what material are the miniatures made from, says Mr. E52S? They are made from a combination of two materials, because we found this cunning plan where the different, different materials have different pros and cons. Uh, most of the miniatures, most of the miniatures you get on Kickstarter games tend to be made out of PVC in some variation. The PVC comes in a lot of different flavors, uh, for want of a better word. Um, don't eat PVC. No, don't. Way. Um, PVA though. No, good. don't good. eat PVA either. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, so PVC is, is, um, it's, it's good for a number of reasons. One of them is it holds detail very nicely. Uh, it's, it allows you to make big chunky things like this um, in a relatively small number of pieces because it, you can do like undercuts and, or like that or like that. Anyway, you have that one. Okay. Um, but it allows you to do slightly more undercuts than something like hard plastic, which is ABS. Um, so it's got some advantages. And of course, if you're doing something big, if you can do undercuts, you can get a nicer mini in less pieces, which makes it, everybody likes things in less pieces because it means you don't have mold lines and so on. Anyway, so we're making the, the bulk of them will be in PVC. However, PVC isn't very good. Much as it's good for bulky things and holding detail of robes and stuff like that, it's not much good for staffs and arrows and spears and swords and stuff like that because it bends when it gets thin. You, I'm sure you'll have seen miniatures and Kickstarters full of, uh, you know, they look great on the renders, and then when you get them, they look like they're holding a, a big stick of limp spaghetti. So... Big stick of limp spaghetti. I love to read Robert E. Hard writing that line, and Solomon Drew is big limp spaghetti sword. It's right here. We'll have to around. Anyway, sorry. You can write all my color text. <laughs> Uh, that would be terrible. Discovery card, you make an attack, you don't get a high enough test. What happens? Your sword turns Spig into spaghetti. So, to avoid that problem, we are going to use two materials. PVC for the uh, bulk of the miniatures, and then ABS, which is hard plastic, like you get in like LFX model kits, for spears and swords and that kind of detail piece, which means that we will get spears that are, come straight when you get them, and they will stay straight. Swords that stay straight, staffs that are straight, details like that, which survive the experience of being molded, sent across the world to your door, and then played with. It's more expensive, obviously, but it's more fiddly for to make. But by the time you get them, because all these miniatures will be pre-assembled, when you get them, you get a lovely miniature, and the details are what they should be. Gorgeous piece. Swords are straight, details there, the minimum number of pieces we can get away with. This is the best combination we've found yet for mass production of stuff. You can do it if you want a tiny number of high quality things to paint, you could do a different kind of resin. That's fine, but it costs loads more and you can't make the quantity. We would take 10 years to fulfill the game because we couldn't make them fast yeah, enough. Absolutely. It's one of the other advantages of PVC is you can make quantity quickly. I'm just going to tell you, and you can decide what you want to do with this information, but we're currently getting quick questions faster than we're answering them. You can decide what you want to do with that. Keep well, ask coming. me questions. Okay, Don't tell me we we're getting them too fast. Uh, the most important question asked of the night, will there still be included a sandwich in the orange pledge? Um, I am not allowed to answer that question anymore. I am uh, I'm afraid the word is removed <laughs> from, my, from my vocabulary. Um, will there be soundtracks music for each of the air or chapters, says Snafu, great name by the way. Um, yeah. This is something we did do for Joan of Arc. Um, Possibly, the way it happened with Joan of Arc was a little bit odd, mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure we will, we will get that situation again. Uh, I've not heard of anything at the moment yeah. that would, would do, but it's, I mean, it's not a thing we, we don't want to do specifically, it's just something we've not got around to. Yeah. The, the project originally was kind of smaller than it ended up. Mm -hmm. And in the process of making it all much bigger than it was originally, we've 
it's kind of run out of time to do fancy little tweaks. But you never know. You never know. It depends on uh, it depends on what we we probably do all sorts of interesting people in this business, um, and they have all sorts of amazing skills, and they just sort of say, "Well, we could do this." And we go, "Oh, that's interesting." We have we have reached six thousand forty one backers by the way, and we're just about to hit six hundred sixty thousand. Amazing! Thank you so much, guys. This is fantastic. Um, Ashley um, is very unhappy that you're not giving him a sandwich. I'll not say well, not, I didn't say I wasn't going to give you a sandwich. I just said I wasn't allowed to talk about sandwiches. Um, <coughs> this question backwards from Benjamin uh, because it, it's yep, yep, um, yep. Solomon Bikini, Solomon Werewolf, Solomon Cyber. Uh, are there plans to release alternative skulls to Solomon Cain? Cyber, Solomon Werewolf, Solomon Bikini, Solomon. Shall we tell them the Solomon that we had written on the board months ago when we were first talking back in our old office? We had a few different potential Solomons that we were like, we could add some fun in. I don't remember any of those. There was a there was a Solomon who was probably like World War Two related that we had thought about bringing in at one point. Uh, Cyber Solomon, I think we also chatted about at one point, just because it's kind of got that kaiju kind of mecha fantasy thing, doesn't it really? Will there be alternative sculpts to Solomon though? Yes, but it won't be any of them. No bit. I'm sorry. We are we are staying very true to the license, even though we're doing some this of our is, own yeah, stuff. I mean, we are... Yeah, the the Solomon Kane is a licensed game, which means we need to follow the stories the license that we're using uh, and and they they approve all of the stuff we do to make sure that we are staying true to the original idea now we we can we have the uh, the the agreement that we can make up some new things within their context within the canon so on with uh, sorry, within the, the the framework that we have as long as we stay true to the spirit of the of the whole thing which is what we've been trying to do so uh, a robot solomon kane is not going to happen because that's not anywhere near being in the in the sort of right yeah. vein for the original thing of course if we'd been doing it ourselves we would love to we would have five but um sadly <laughs> we are restricted i'm gonna blame the license off. that's very mean of me no we wouldn't do it anyway we, we love we love solomon kane in the 16th century we do. being we crazy do yeah, being yeah. crazy um Vajra said you mentioned the longer is not part of the core box will he be a no. stretch goal or part of an expansion or what no longer is um, he. he we, we've we've picked three three stories, three adventures for the core box, and no longer isn't in any of those. He will turn up in the story where he should be. He will turn up in the right story. We have done. If we get everything through everything, we will cover nearly all of the stories that that Howard wrote, and we've also added some more. The reasons we haven't, the ones we haven't done, are either we couldn't work out how to make them as a story on the board that would, would be exciting, or uh, one of them was would have required a completely new set of miniatures all for itself, yeah. because it was so different from anything else. Um, and was also a fragment, which was a problem with a lot of these stories are, are not complete. Uh, I think about something like a third of the stories we have are, are only partially done. Yeah. Dorth Thonian says, will mythic beards become a stretch goal? And I want to know, does he mean we're all going to grow amazing beards, or does he I mean, mean it's all that? kind of Methuselah, like great, yeah. long. Uh, I was more thinking, because we, we discussed this last night with, with we, we all had, Travis. Yeah. When, if we were going to do our Leo mini, we were going to potentially let the community decide what uh, facial hair Leo should have. We oh, had right. a few suggestions that had long, windy, evil moustaches. Um, mm -hmm. That might be a nightmare for a sculptor, but would look amazing. Have you seen the, the moustache on Lacoste? Do we have Lacoste there? We haven't shown Lacoste yet, I don't think. We should no, we no, showed no, 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 no. Lacoste, Lacoste to we? a private secret stream when we just Oh, is that what we do? I don't think we've shown him yet. Should we show him? I, I believe he has quite famous moustachios. Should, should we show him the... I don't know. I don't think people want to see him right now. People don't want to see him. Okay, well, we'll, we'll just, nah, assume, we'll just assume no. that they, they, no. don't, they don't want to do it. The first three said no. Okay, fair enough. That's fine. In okay, fact, next question. I'm actually going to, I'm going to zoom this in a little. He's, Next he's question. Got such amazing facial Next hair. question. Uh, they don't want to see him. They don't want to see him. They don't want to see, they him. Don't want to see him. That's fine. That's Sorry, right. guys. Everyone said no. Um, I think, to be honest with you, that is more to every other question. There's a couple of questions. You said there were so already, many. You couldn't possibly there is a couple do that it. We've already answered them. So uh, if you have right. any more questions, guys, get them in the Q and A now because we're going to look to wrap this up soon. I'm going to let me get that. I'm going to go and write updates. Let me bring him in for a second. I'm going to. I'm going to 
do some focus in here, just off camera, super, oh, super, pro super professional style here. Super professional. Because this is all just because I really want you guys to be able to see Lacoste's facial hair. What a weird statement! You know, you've been alive <laughs> so long on the planet, you think you've heard every combination of the English language, and then you say something mm. like that. Okay, so do you want to tell us who's Lacoste? Who's Lacoste? Lacoste is. You have to know who Lulu is, really, to know who Lacoste uh -huh. is. Uh, one of the if you if you know the stories then probably the most famous of the opponents that Solomon Cain ever faces is a French bandit called Lelou. And Solomon chases him across Europe to get his own. He's actually the chap you see in the trailer. That's what's going on. The, the young girl who's being uh, assaulted and abused and eventually killed by Lelou. Mm -hmm. The is wolf. the wolf, um, which is why the wolves are there. Um, he he uh, Solomon Cain finds this girl and then goes on this great crusade to track down Lulu and punish him for being an evil scumbag, mm -hmm. basically. Anyway, so Lacosta is one of Lulu's henchmen, so he's like a mini boss, as it were. He's he's um one of he's, he's a bad guy through and through. And his moustache proves it. <laughs> if, if evil twirling moustaches were, uh, were a measure of your, your badness, then, then I think he'd... Uh... Or a measure of your badness. I think that's, we all know that, right? We all know that well. Throwing a, knife a, versus pistol. There's a great word in, in one of the stories that Howard wrote, which is, uh, is describing Solomon Cain, because Howard kind of makes words up when he, mm -hmm. when he needs them. <laughs> He's describing, uh, I was thinking of badder and badder yeah. Solomon Cain is described as being dangerouser than a wolf. Dangerouser, what a great word. I rather like dangerouser. Um, the second, for the second night in the room, by the way, we did have a question around Agnes de Chastillon, another character that Robert E. Hart wrote about. If we're writing uh, new stories to the column, people actually say, any chance we can include her? It's now with the game designer, so your request has been heard. Okay. We, we're doing a lot of new stuff. We are doing a lot of new, new stuff. I mean, I don't think we've got anything with her in at the moment. Yeah. So it kind of depends on where we get to in stretch goals. Because we have to prep this stuff in advance. Yeah. Cool. I think that's us. Well, we've run out of questions. Well, yeah, pretty much. We've just hit 500 as well. Where are we? We're on 600 and just have 660,000 plays so far. Thank you so much, guys. 6,041 wow. backers, 500 people in the chat. Wow. So for anyone that's come in late, if you want to, once the, the live stream's finished, you can replay it. We went through a bunch of frequently asked questions that have come up in the first 24 hours. Yep. We answered as many of those as we could. We then talked about the provenance mode, uh, the solo mode that you guys unlock alongside how you can play the game solo or with two or three players and having the added support of other virtues and how that has changed and how we've developed those rules since even the videos we did with Beast of War and Trick Track and, uh, and cons. We'll be playing this on Friday night at 7 p.m. PST, oh sorry, BST, sorry, um, or 8 p.m. CST, I think that's 2 p.m. EDT, I think, I think. I think so. Like um, so we'll be live showing you guys some new gameplay with using some of the lovely mini minis that we have here with a new um, setting that we'll be diving into and putting Solomon into a completely different kind of thing than going and saving a traveler. He's going to be in some hot water. So yeah, one of the things about what we've, uh, some of the criticism we saw was about it's, it's the same every time. And it's the same every time because what we've shown you is the same thing every time. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and so what we've done for, we've, we've been working on four or five, five or kind of several different um, scenes for videos. We aren't going to play a whole one because that's going to take a long time and people's attention spans are not as big as we like them to be. Much more fun to play than it is to watch games, I find. So we've done, what we've done is we've taken little slices of different stories yeah. and we've picked deliberately, we've picked radically different things. So He's searching, each, he's so fighting, he's, he's in he's, trouble. He's, he's, he's going to, yeah, I mean, and, and they're, they're all different aspects of what Solomon Cain does in his adventures. And so it tells you the kind of different range of things that he can get up to. Mm -hmm. And it shows you that the puzzles are all quite different and that the different virtue strengths and weaknesses all balance each other out in the end. So if you're playing a, a game and if you, if you just see one chapter, you might think, oh, well, Temperance is rubbish because 
they're really good at, at exploring and stuff and that and that didn't come up and you go, well yeah it didn't come up in that chapter but that chapter is only one part of the act and in the other part of the act they were absolutely central to how it worked so that kind of varying and changing in importance and potency in the game as it goes along you can sit there and you'll be really the key piece for one moment and then next time next moment you're not really you know, you're busy supporting the other guys because they're important to do if that. If you wouldn't mind, because you're actually leading right into a question that came up that I would like to answer before we leave, because it's something that came up in Board Game Geek, and it's something that I think is a really interesting discussion, and it's around mm. how we are handling alpha gamers taking over the game. Because really, that's a social question as much as it is mm. a game design question. I must remember my first time I played Pandemic, I had a very negative experience with it because I had quite a, an alpha power gamer with loads of experience who basically boiled it down to a numbers game and took all the theme out of it and, and didn't really give us much opportunity. So I'm personally very aware of how an alpha game can remove all the, the fun from a game at times. But with Solomon Cain, you are forced to collaborate. You have to work together. It's, it's interesting. I mean, I think at the end of the day, if you have someone who's really, really, really alpha, and yeah. there's, there's no way to avoid them. I don't know any mechanic that you can put in that will actually guarantee to, to stop them. You don't want to and I think, yeah, I mean, it, it's, 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 yeah. I mean it's, it's, it's kind of a weird situation where it's like saying, I mean, it's like analysis paralysis or any of the other kind of things that, that can be problematic when you're playing. That's really about your social group, your yeah. gaming group. There's nothing much we can mitigate that with because you're you're stopping people playing the way they want to play. Except what you did mention, which is what led into it, is that you will have different times where the virtues will shine. Yeah. And the alpha, alpha well, that, gamer that is, will not always be the one that shines. Yeah, I mean that is that is the uh, that is one of the things I've done. I mean I found actually the the, the games I've I've been uh, watching the demos with with like uh, outside our kind of playtest immediate playtest group. We found actually less alpha gaming in this than most games yeah. I've played that have been co-op. Absolutely agree. And, and that seems to be why we're getting reported from the ambassadors and so on. And it's, I think it's, it's not something I've deliberately engineered out, but I think has been a side effect of the way in which I've engineered in the cooperation. Yeah. And I think that that, that by, by the, the style of design I've used to put the cooperation in and the fact that everybody has been, I mean, the feedback we've been having is that it's really cooperative as opposed to the other games. I mean, I don't, it's hard to know exactly what people mean because we don't know what they've played, but several times feedback from the ambassadors has been, here's the, the ambassadors go out and they demo stuff and then they often send us reports back with these are the things people told yeah. us. So you get to see the patterns after a while when we have, how many things have we been? How many? Over 60 and each one's had multiple demos. That's right. So, so, the so, of demos. So, so we're getting these things back and people are saying certain things. And one of the things we've had time and time again uh, is that it's really cooperative. People say it's really cooperative, like the other games they've played have only been kind of pretending to be cooperative. And that's really nice for me because it means that the bits I've been doing to try and make that happen yeah. seem to have worked. But it's hard to kind of quantify exactly where that kind of clicked over from sure. one to the other. Yeah. But I think that process is how this has been reducing the alpha player by making it more cooperative, mm -hmm. by putting lots and lots of details in about how you have to work together. Mm -hmm. And by making that, I think, and I think this is what's done it, is because instead of saying there is one thing you must cooperate with, mm -hmm. I've put 56 things in yeah. that you must cooperate with that are all small. Yeah. So I think an alpha player is finding it harder Absolutely. to boil down and to find the essence. So when people get very good at it, they probably can still do it, yeah. but it makes it more difficult for them to, to synthesize it. Yeah, it's, like, it's not that simple. There's too many subtleties in it. Yeah. And I think that, so I think, yes, we can sort of mitigate that in a way, but I think we've done it by accident. Yeah. Happy, happy accident, a happy yeah. accident. And um, sorry if we do speak a little bit fast, guys, whenever we get going. I really appreciate anyone who's not a native English speaker holding on to this. It's it's so, so, it's so impressive. Um, okay. I can't follow friends. As soon as friends, Leo and Ben will start yep. going at it full oh, speed, I'm goodness. lost. Um, okay, I'm going to wrap this up. We're going to finish off, and I'm going to do what I've been excited to do all day. Tomorrow, we're going to have even more content going on the page. You guys are going to keep unlocking stretch goals, which is which is absolutely huge. Thank you, like literally, thank you so 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 much for that. And um, tomorrow, and um, we're going to have uh, Leo will be live tomorrow. Leo will be live, telling um, so you all about sure something new and shiny. We'll be live on the 
uh, Friday night. Day after, night whenever that is. I Saturday, lost track of time. Yeah, Saturday Leo will be live again. Sunday we'll be live again. Literally, you can see Do it. we not get a day off? Nope. Literally, the next uh, five day, four days, you're going to have constant live streams every evening with different types of content. And I'm going to set up a little um, prelude here to something that tomorrow evening Leo will tell you all about. Leo will tell you all about. Oh, I should have got a close cam for this. So where am I Just going? stick your face in front of that one. No. <laughs> okay. Where are we? From that black gaping entrance, no tiger fanged beast or demon of solid flesh and blood leaped forth. But a fearful stench flowed out in billowing, almost tangible waves, and in one brain shattering, ravening rush, whereby the gaping door seemed to gush with blood, the horror was upon them. It enveloped Hasim and the fearless chieftain, hewing vainly at the almost intangible terror, screamed with sudden, unaccustomed fright as his lashing scimitar whistled only through stuff as yielding and unharmable as air, and he felt himself lapped by coils of death and destruction. As in a nightmare of delirium, Cain saw Hasim swayed like a reed in the wind, lapped about by a gigantic pulsing red thing that had neither shape nor earthly substance. Then as the crack of splintering bones came to him and the sheik's body buckled like a straw beneath a stamping hoof, the Englishman burst from his bonds with one volcanic effort. Hasim was dying, crushed and dead sprawled like a broken toy with shattered limbs awry and the red pulsing thing was lurching towards Cain like a thick cloud of blood in the air that continually changed its shape and form and yet somehow trod lumberingly as if on monstrous legs. Good night. Good night. It's been fun. We'll see you again tomorrow evening. I'm going to have to sneak off now all subtly to turn off the stream. You guys can look at me as I just do this now. Ruin the mood that I just set. Ah.